So we are here today with Bennett Foddy, the creator of Getting Over It, among many other games. Uh, for folks who aren't familiar with Getting Over It, how would you describe it to people? Uh, Getting Over It is a physics-based uh, uh, skill game, a challenge game, a massacre game where you uh, drag yourself up a very steep mountain of trash uh, with a hammer and you're a guy in a pot. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And so, so very interesting. You mentioned this term like massacre. What, what, does that, what does that mean for folks who don't know? Right, so massacre games are, are games for masochists. Uh, I think that term emerged uh, for, for freeware and uh, flash games in the mid 2000s uh, with work by people like Messhoff and Anna Anthropy. Uh, games that really kind of amp up the, the level of frustration uh, that you feel when you're playing it. So, so uh, yeah, it's like a, it's, it's a game that's about uh, sort of masochistic play. This thing that we call failure is not the falling down, but the staying down. Mary Pickford. Whoop. And so obviously, like, it's kind of drawing on a tradition of video game difficulty, uh, but maybe taking that to a sort of a, an extreme. Exactly, or just kind of playing with that concept and uh, getting away from the idea of, like, difficulty ramp and kind of uh, wh whatever we consider the rules to be about how difficult your game should be. That's super interesting. And so one of the things that, that I've observed is that the game has garnered a lot of interest from sort of streamers and, and people on YouTube. Uh, what do you think has led to that? I think it's, it's difficult to say because I, uh, I did not necessarily think that that was going to be the case when I was, uh, when I was designing the game. But uh, you know, I, I do think that, that generally when, people, uh, when a game really takes off on YouTube or streams it's because people enjoy watching it being played. Uh, part of that might be that it, it is a game that provokes strong emotions in the, in the YouTubers and the streamers who are playing it. Uh, that's certainly part of it in this case, I would say. But, but also, uh, you know, the, it, it can be a, just inherent in the game that the game creates uh, moments of, of, of spectacle or uh, the, what I always think about with my game is there's this kind of moment where you almost get up over a, an obstacle and you just, just miss it. I think that kind of almost but not quite moment is like really fun to watch. You get, everybody gets that kind of excitement and the letdown when the, when the disappointing uh, fall happens and that, uh, that I think makes it kind of good spectacle to watch as well. That's super interesting, those kind of moments of tension and excitement. Right. Very cool. And, and the game has a sort of distinctive visual style. Mm. Uh, where did that sort of evolve from? Um, yeah, I, I had the idea. I mean, I wanted to make the game all by myself. I had a certain time frame that I needed to work in because it was commissioned for a Humble Monthly Bundle. And I had a scope. Like, I wanted to be able to make a certain amount of mountain. So I knew I needed to be able to work fast. And if I, if I had to do all my own 3D models or something like that, it would be too slow. And actually, the first thing I tried was uh, finding old furniture magazines and uh, you know the Internet Archive is full of like old magazines and ads for furniture and I was like uh, getting those scans and, and kind of cutting out the furniture and doing like a 2D mountain it just didn't look very good it didn't have the kind of depth I think when you're when you're doing a game where you move the the camera in 2D uh, you get you get a lot of uh, of beauty and sort of dynamism on the screen just by having depth and having layers and, and a sense of like space, uh, and that made me think uh, I really I really needed it to be uh, 3D level even though the even though the game takes place in 2D, uh, but I still like I knew that that getting you know textures and 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 models, uh, making them myself was just wildly out of scope, would have taken years of, of work and also not that good of a 3D artist. So I thought, well, what, what else can I do here? And you know, there's, there is obviously the, the internet is just packed with, with assets, the assets, obviously the Unity asset store, there's a lot of free stuff. I, I needed way too many models to be able to pay for them all. So I was looking at kind of free model repositories and you know, they just don't, the free models, you know, for very good reason, just don't, look that good right and they're they're not they're not uh they're, they don't fit well together as well like some of them have are high poly models some of them are low poly models some of them are kind of photogrammetry 
Some of them are, are kind of hand painted. And uh, I thought the only way that I can um, embrace this as an aesthetic is to really embrace sort of uh, trash as an aesthetic. Uh, what would that mean? And I thought like, maybe I can kind of involve the narrative of the game in that as well. And so it kind of all sort of flows from that. Um, why is the guy in a pot? I don't know. I mean, I had to do something with his legs. I knew I needed a, a, a I, I, was, I knew I was gonna have to tweak the collider shape to be able to get the kind of game feel that I wanted. Uh, and so you need a kind of a shape that can stand in for lots of different things and not just be like a square or a circle. It needs to be something with a little bit of shape to it. Uh, and, it and I guess from there, uh, yeah, man in a pot. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, yeah, the, the, the image of the man in the pot is very iconic in a way. It's sort of futile and hopeless. Right. And right. It's sort of like a, it's, it's saying like he's really heavy cast iron pot. He's making it even harder for himself than otherwise would be. Yeah, that's kind of the, the, the idea that that's expressing. And then the hammer, I guess, is a reference to, to one of the main inspiration games for, for it, which is uh, Sexy Hiking, which is an old game maker game from 2002. Uh, where you use a hammer to, to climb a mountain. So uh, uh, I was sort of riffing on that and redesigning that, yep. Cool. So those are all the components. That's how you arrive at like a, uh, a, a situation that looks as though all of everything's kind of arbitrary and random, but everything was kind of logical and flowed, and flowed from, for some kind of reason for having it there. Yeah, that's super, super interesting. And I feel like the, I love the, process of designing from constraints, right? You're coming in, you say, I know I have this scope, I know I have this amount of time, I have this kind of capacity in terms of my ability to produce things, and then what is the sort of, what is the aesthetic that's going to serve all this? I feel like it's something that a lot of people maybe, especially people starting out, don't understand. Yeah, I mean, it's different though. I mean, if you're, if you're making a game um, just, just under no particular uh, business arrangement, it, it's different, but when somebody is paying you a commission, that's the amount of money that you ex have to expect to make. You know, times are, are tough out there for kind of weird experimental games. And uh, you've got to assume that if you're getting paid a commission by, by Humble, in this case very generously, that that's all the money you're going to make. And if that's the, that being the case, you really just, if you want to have a sustainable practice, you can't, you can't go over scope, right? You have to be very strict with yourself. Uh, and so, yeah, that was really kind of at the forefront of my mind. I didn't want to wind up in a situation where I had uh, worked for, for, you know, like two years full time and been paid for three months or, or four months, you know. So, uh, so I was, yeah, I was just, I was just thinking about that and trying to, trying to be responsible about that as well.